Well, today I'm with uh, Jeremy DeBoard and Jordan Lenick. Uh, they are funeral directors at uh, DeBoard uh, Funeral Home, and uh, we've been working on a project uh, for a, oh, a month or so now, but actually it's been a, uh, a few years that um, Blue Christmas has been part of uh, the life of our congregation at First Presbyterian Church. And um, we've, we discovered a few years ago that Jordan had uh, a similar program. That, what did you call it? The We just called it a holiday program, a service of remembrance. S service of remembrance. And uh, we discovered that we were doing them across the street from each other almost on the same day. Mm -hmm. So we thought, why don't we try to do it together? So last year, Laura Sandberg and Jordan uh, worked on uh, combining efforts, and we thought that it really worked. So we're doing it again this year. It's a little different than we planned. We had hoped uh, that we would all fit in the sanctuary and uh, do it there, but now we're offering this. Um, it'll be available tomorrow, um, Sunday, December 6th at 2 o'clock. Um, there's a, the uh, capacity is already full for uh, in-person uh, availability, but we will have a, uh, a link available and that's on your screen right now and also you can um, you can visit our website or the DeBoard website and uh, click that link as well and it'll take you right directly to you don't have to do anything just click the link and it'll take you right into the it'll service take you right to the service so uh, it is it's a service that's designed for people who are experiencing difficulty and grief during the holidays and I just thought uh, I'd take a moment and I'll ask you Jer Jeremy what are uh, some of the things that you've seen that are different in 2020 as a result of coronavirus. Well, well a lot. Yeah, as we're all facing a lot of a variety of different uh, different changes. You know, the global pandemic has been challenging in a lot of ways, um, especially here in the funeral industry. Looking for ways to you know, have memorable and meaningful funerals for families. You know, we've utilized outdoor services. We've taken on the ability to live stream. We've used technology to broadcast our funerals. A lot of more intimate gatherings so there's been a lot of changes from an industry standpoint but the need for families to grieve has not changed and that's been a challenge folks want to hug they want to shake hands and that's difficult while following CDC guidelines yeah so what are some of those additional griefs and losses that you think people are facing this year that are uh, that are different well they're, they're heartbreaking I mean, yeah. we, we hear stories where you know, a, a spouse were to pass away, possibly under, um, in a nursing home setting where the loved ones, the families were not able to say their goodbyes. Yeah. It's heartbreaking to say the least. Right. Mm -hmm. So our goal as funeral directors and, um, you know, to, pro to try to provide that meaningful service to them. And I think we, all things considered, um, with the pandemic, we, we've done a nice job and we've given that, uh, given families the ability to do so, but it's, it's different in a lot of ways. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And they can't have the type of services they normally would have liked to have right. had. And um, with limiting the amount of people that can come, as well as not being able to hug or have their luncheons afterwards, they're missing out on, on that connection with people that they really need right. when they're feeling that way. So that's been hard as well. Yeah. So all those normal uh, ceremonies and events that help people to deal with grief have have either gone away or you've had to figure out how to limited. do it in a new, new way. And, and they're still there. They, they're they're yeah. still happening. I mean, folks oh, are absolutely yeah. able to have their funerals, but in a different capacity, smaller capacities. And again, live streaming and technology has been extremely important. Right. Yeah, it's, it's not helpful. the same, but it's at least something. Yeah. So right. we're one grateful the, for that. One thing we've noticed, and maybe you've seen this too, is there, uh, I was, I've become aware of a whole population of people who in the past were never able to come to the funeral to, right. that needed these, who now have the ability to participate. Absolutely. Yeah, and have that access to yeah. it, right. Yeah, and that has shown me that uh, that's something we should never change. I don't want to go back. No, in fact, we've received a slew of thank you notes over the last wow. couple of weeks. You know, thank you for giving us the ability to watch the service. We're, you know, we're in California, we can't come, or my, my son or daughter is serving overseas, and they're still able to to witness that celebration, it's, it's neat. That's it's neat that's to be able to give that to families. Really yeah. Just uh, as a kind of a, to promote tomorrow a little bit, um, how, Jordan, how would you say that a service, a service of remembrance like this could be helpful to people, particularly this year? Yeah, I mean, we always think that this service is helpful because the holidays are always a hard time, especially after, you know, a loss. 
um, and this year in particular, there's just so many other feelings and emotions involved. And for the people especially who haven't gotten to have their service yet, who are waiting to um, feel that they maybe haven't been able to even acknowledge that loss yet. And so I think that this will give them that space where they can feel they can acknowledge that, yeah. especially right before the holidays. Yeah, it won't, it won't by any means replace uh, a personal funeral service, but it can be an assistance to right. them to feel a little bit of closure at, at this year. Right. So good. Any, anything else you'd want to tell us about this? I was just going to mention historically, this program has been for those who have lost a loved one. Right. Um, and it's certainly geared towards that, but you know, grief, there's a variety of grief that occurred this year for a variety of reasons. For all of us. For all yes. of us yeah. in so many different ways. So we welcome anyone to, to attend, participate. We'd, we'd love to have anyone yeah. take part who would find value in it. Yeah, we have, uh, as Jordan and I crafted the service for this year, we've identified four different areas of, of loss. So, of course, relationships, but also uh, any health losses, resource losses, or if, a, if an event like a graduation, or something like that, trunks, or something, all trunks, that hasn't been able to happen. So we're going to also take time just to recognize and honor that, Absolutely. that as well. So uh, be sure to click on uh, the websites, both of our websites, uh, on tomorrow, and go directly to. Uh, uh, we invite you to come directly to the service. Also, our the bulletin for the service. Uh, is also available on our website, fbclancasterpa.org. So if you have a, a second device handy, you can click on that link and be following along in the program while the service is, is, is going on. So we really appreciate our you guys as neighbors. Uh, it's fun to get to know you guys, and uh, we're so grateful for this partnership, but all the things that we get to do together. Well, our friendships yeah. are, has gone back four generations, so we, right. certainly, we certainly appreciate that. That's right. So. They, they were us. Absolutely. So, that's <laughs> great. All right, peace be with you. Thank you.